A lot of people sometimes call me the bird lady. Hey little girls. I've been rehabilitating wildlife in Kaikoura for the past five years and those have primarily consisted of seabirds. I did joke that I should pull out a cape and go da 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 because uh, people see you doing very strange things in public places and you lose all levels of shame. Again it! You see that? I'm a wildlife biologist, so I've, I study at the University of Canterbury, I study biology. I got to Kaikoura because I met my partner who resides here, and so I've been here for five years. New Zealand is the seabird capital of the world, and Kaikoura is the seabird capital of New Zealand. New Zealand birds are in trouble, and 90% of seabirds are threatened, and nearly all of that is due to human-related threats. So that's unfortunate, but it's something that we know, and it's something we can do something about. People themselves can make a difference when they see an unwell bird by reporting it and ensuring it gets the help it needs. Members of the public will call me in relation to unwell birds. So in the summer we literally have people calling me saying the beach is just littered in seabirds, which, you know, that's distressing to people and they don't understand why this is. It's looking like it's going to be a little bit bouncy, but um, certainly nothing to worry about. So. It will be fine. Could be a bit choppy today. Makes it all the more exciting. <laughs> Here's a northern giant petrel. They're the largest of the petrel species. They're very good at scavenging. Great characters of the ocean. It's the southern royal. He'd be a male, this one. He's quite a size. These are pelagic seabirds that spend 98% of their lives at sea. They only utilise offshore islands or the mainland for breeding. The wandering albatross, they mate for life with about a 5 to 7% divorce rate, which is pretty low, I guess. He has the potential to live well over 60 years. I think it makes people appreciate the birds more, you know, that even the gulls live 20 plus years. You know, they lead significant lifespans on this earth. A lot of people just get blown away by the fact you can see all sorts of animals just offshore, which is very unique. What really draws the seabirds here is the Kaikoura Canyon, which is a deep water canyon only 800 metres from shore. So we've got a huge food source. Kai means food, and so kara is crayfish. So there was, there's a huge cultural history here because of the abundance of food. Look at all the birds, it's just amazing. It's right there on the shore feeding. Hundreds and hundreds of them. Big interspecies flock all looking for the same thing, food. The main reason that we have these birds in care is starvation. Climate change is causing an increase in sea surface temperature and that's suppressing prey species such as krill and fish to cooler depths. So what that means is surface feeding seabirds can't pursue those upwellings because they're not happening. We've got a spotted shag here, that's a juvenile, only died in, in the last week. And when you feel for body condition, you feel the sternum here and it's just bone, there's no body mass, there's no muscle. So this is a really common sight to find dead shags, penguins, gulls and shearwaters across our beaches. This is a hut in shearwater. It's quite a decomposed body now from a month or two ago. And you can tell it's been eaten by a cat and it died because of cat predation. And that's unfortunately really common. It's really sad seeing birds like this. This was probably one of the young fledglings. And you know, it never even made it to sea. Never even got to live its life, never got to breed. And that's how species declines happen. A lot of people don't realise that the red bull gull, which is perceived to be really common, is now a threatened species. Kaikoura is really unique in having the largest remaining mainland colony and also the fastest declining colony. It's an ageing population with very little juvenile recruitment and that means a lot of the chicks never make it to adulthood. When the birds die of old age, you see a huge population crash. During the summer period, you often find starving shags and the young shags will actually walk up to people in their backyards and building sites in desperation of food. Any of these seabirds have got the potential to end up in care and that may be just from exhaustion due to storms, it may be due to poor body condition or fishing line entanglements. 
definitely reliant on some form of care in Kaikoura. I physically couldn't maintain that sort of a voluntary workload helping that many patients non-stop every year. I had to reconsider how I and we can make a difference in Kaikoura long term that doesn't just rely on a sole individual. So we've established a trust and the goal now is to fundraise to create a dedicated wildlife hospital in Kaikoura. It will be a multifaceted centre where patients are triaged behind the scenes. We will then have pre-release aviaries as well as an education centre and chick rearing units. And they will also have benefits to wider New Zealand and any visitors that come here. This will probably be my life's work in terms of the work it, it takes to achieve something like this. If the will is there and enough people have that passion to make it happen, it will happen. We've really only just started this journey, so at the very beginning of a big project and exciting times ahead.